Hello there everyone, um, I'm Anna from Juvella and welcome along to our second Instagram Live cook along with Sarah Howells, our gluten-free blogger. I'm just going to let Sarah in, check that she's there. So if you can bear with me just one second while I do that. Okay, I'm gonna send her a little request to make sure she's she's with us because um, otherwise we've uh, We've got nobody to cook the, the delicious prawn toast for us tonight. So hopefully she's uh, she's just waiting to go in. Here she is now, I think. Hi, Sarah, are you there? Have we got Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I thought we had a little... Um, Technical glitch there, but you're here. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. It's all good, I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> Aww. So, um, as I was just saying, um, tonight we're going to be, you're going to be showing us um, how to make some delicious prawn toast, which I'm yeah. so excited about. In fact, so excited, I actually made some before. <laughs> did you? That's it. I did. Oh, they were nice, they're nicely propped, but um, if I hold oh, it up, you'll to see. Oh my God, they are so lovely and so easy to make, aren't they? I know, when I first said about, we talked about making these, I was like, oh my gosh, prawn toast, that sounds really complicated. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, why have I never made these before? They're so easy. <laughs> I know, I think I'll be making them a lot more now, I've realised just how easy they are to make. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I can see a lot of people joining in. If anyone's making them along with us tonight, make sure you give us a wave and let us know. And we'll yeah, like, for everything. <laughs> Yeah, but as last time, if you've got any queries as we go through or you want us to, Sarah, to repeat anything, just give us a shout and I'll try and keep an eye on the comments and um, and answer any questions. Well, I am starving, so I think we should... <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, so do you want, shall I hand over to you and you can um, you can be creative for us? Yeah, I will do my best. <laughs> I've got to make them look as pretty as yours now. It's like pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> So basically, if anybody's making these, the idea of prawn toast is that, I mean, it's basically what it sounds like. It's like a prawn paste on top of toast with some sesame seeds and you fry it on both sides and it goes kind of crunchy and delicious. And it's just like, if you haven't tried it, then you just have to, because it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah this like um, any Chinese food, yeah. you get a lot of queries for people who want to recreate their favorite Chinese food gluten free. Um, Would, so this is one way fine doesn't it like you can't find any gluten-free Chinese food unless you're really lucky to live next to like a really accommodating restaurant so actually to be able to make something like this at home really easily is like amazing <laughs> yeah absolutely so for this i'm using the javela sliced white loaf because you can get you've got a couple of different white loaves haven't you Anna? i don't know if you want to like talk through what the different yeah. options those are while I get it all out and put it on my chopping board. <laughs> yeah, sure. So the one that Sarah's just held up there is our long slice, white sliced loaf. Um, so we do a sliced and unsliced and you can get it in white or fibre. For this particular recipe, I'd probably use the white sliced loaf. Um, yeah. So the long slice, um, the packaging that Sarah just showed you um, is a modified atmosphere packaging. So it gives that bread a longer shelf life. Once it's opened, as it is now, you would just treat it like fresh bread, but before it's opened, it's got a, a 13 week shelf life. So that gives you, it, it gives you loads of flexibility. You can have them, the, the packs of bread and rolls in your cupboard and store them just that way um, for a longer period of time. Um, but then we've also got, which I've got here, is the fresh <laughs> loaf. So I love that. the, um, the Javella white sliced loaf, which I've used this one today for, for doing the prawn toast I made. Um, and the fresh bread as it, as the name suggests, is a fresh product. So that when you receive it, either on prescription or via our, um, our boxes, um, then the, um, the fresh bread's got a five day shelf life. So you will need to freeze some of it, but it freezes brilliantly. So there's no problem there. You can just squeeze it into little sections of your freezer and um, then it's there to, to take out as and when you need it. Or you can just make a ton of prawn toast and then you don't need to freeze it at all. <laughs> Perfect idea. <laughs> so when I did my practice runs, actually, I made a lot of it with that loaf, the fresh loaf. But this time I had a couple of these loaves. So I thought, I'm going to try it with these. Like, we'll do it because I think it will work just as well with either, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the, the, sorry, the loaf you, Sarah's got there, you, because of the um, packaging, you would need to 
um, if you're making a, using it for a sandwich or something like that, you'd need to refresh it. So either in the microwave or just by toasting it. But obviously, you're going to put some heat onto it in making the prawn toast. So there's no need to refresh it before you do this. So it's probably yeah. perfect. Yeah, so I've got four slices for this. Um, obviously, if you want to make less, you can half the recipe quantities. But to be honest, you're going to want to eat all of it. So I'd just make yeah. the whole hog. <laughs> the first thing that you need to do with this is just to cut off the crust. So you don't really have to do this, but I think it just makes it look a bit neater and kind of yeah. Not, um, and you can actually save the red crust, and I actually use them for breadcrumbs, so I tend to blitz. Just going to say the same yeah. thing. I lack a food very, waste. Obviously, very frugal of us. Yeah, don't yeah. waste anything. So. <laughs> Throw them away when you literally can just use them to, as like a coating for anything. You could use it for like breaded fish or you could use it for fried chicken. And yeah. you can also freeze the breadcrumbs as well. So if you want to put on like a pasta bake. So make sure you don't waste anything in this recipe. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I think with breadcrumbs, I tend to whiz up loads of breadcrumbs and then just mm. put a big bag of breadcrumbs in the freezer. And then you could just take a handful out. And it's so, like you say, so versatile for yeah. food and you could do different flavoured ones as well. I mean, you could get really creative with the breadcrumbs. And like, yeah. why buy You can just make prawn toast and use the crust. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just quickly cutting the edges off of these to neaten them up. And I'm trying to literally cut like as little as possible off. Yeah. So just enough that we get like a nice neat square. Um, obviously you don't want to go crazy and cut loads off, otherwise you're going to have very tiny prawn toast. <laughs> Okay, so someone's just asked about the crusts. Um, do you just yeah. blitz them in a food processor or, or do you need to dry them out? I blitz them in a food processor. I don't know about you. Yeah, same. I do that. And I mean, you can toast them if you want to, like blitz them and then like spread them out. But to be honest, I just blitz them up and then I normally put them on top of like pasta bake or I'm frying them. So they'll kind of go golden then anyway. So yeah. I'm going to put them on the side so I can make some breadcrumb for later. Perfect. And then once we've got the squares, all I'm going to do is just cut it into triangles like that. I'm going to do it on top of board, not like this. That'd be a bit yeah. awkward. <laughs> not in the air. Yeah, so you've basically got... Now, you could do it in half again, but I kind of like like a big chunk of prawn toast. So I go for like half of the bread. Yeah, I did the same when I made them. I thought if I just cut it into quarters, it's just... They're quite yeah. nice as a bite size. Then, yeah, well, but... if you're making this as like a canopy for a party and you're making loads... You yeah. could do it then and it would be perfect. Yeah, definitely. So once I've cut these, I'm just going to pop them to the side of my chopping board, which you can't see, but I'm just going to do a nice little pile of them there. And then okay. basically, all we have to do next is make this prawn paste to put on top of the toast. Now, I'll just read through what you need for the ingredients quickly. Now, if anyone's making it and wants to kind of just a bit of a refresher. So yeah. we're going to... 150 grams of raw, I'm using king prawns, and you can use cooked prawns if you want to, um, but you, there's no problem with using raw prawns, you're going to be frying it pretty yeah. well on prawns anyway. Yeah, so, so they'll, they'll cook no problem, won't they? Absolutely. Um, and then for flavouring, we've got a teaspoon of fresh ginger, which I'm going to grate into my food processor. I've okay. got a couple of spring onions, which I'm going to use. The ones in the garden weren't quite big enough to use yet, so I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for our flavouring as well, we're going to put a dash of toasted sesame seed oil, which I love. Like I cook all my Chinese stir fry this because it just oh, tastes yeah. good. <laughs> Gorgeous. Um, and then some gluten-free soy sauce. Now, if you're new to a gluten-free diet, normal soy sauce is made with wheat flour. So you want to look for something like a tamari soy sauce and one that's in the free from aisle specifically marked gluten-free. They're really easy to find in the supermarkets. But just in case you're new to this, like don't pick up a normal soy sauce and think it's going to be fine. Yeah, it so probably it's quite... yeah, but as you say, they're quite, it's quite readily available in most free from yeah. aisles now, isn't it? Definitely. Um, and then also I'm going to use an egg white and I'm going to use some of the Javella white mix um, to bind it together. And you can use corn flour if you don't have this, but this stuff is amazing. So it's worth getting some for your baking anyway. Because I love it. It amazing cakes, like really fluffy. But we're not making cakes tonight, so I won't get to no. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so while I just chop all these up, so all I'm going to do is basically bond this all in the food processor. Um, I'm just going to roughly chop up the spring onions just so that I'm not chucking them in in one massive lump because they won't fit. Um, and I'm 
peel the ginger and I'm going to grate that in. But while I'm doing that, Anna, I understand that the bread, you can actually get on prescription, can't you? Yeah. So um, basically, Javella started as a prescription brand. So um, yeah. you can get all of the Javella products on prescription. That is now if you live in a, in a, a prescribing area, because as some people may be aware, um, some CCGs, which is clinical commissioning groups, um, removed access to gluten-free prescriptions um, over the past kind of three or four years. Um, but there's still lots of areas, including your own area, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's still lots of areas within England where you can still get prescriptions. Um, the easiest way to, to find out if yours is a prescribing area, if, if you look on our website, we've got a, a postcode checker and that will tell you what oh, the prescribing cool. policy is. So that's a really quick and easy way to find out. Yeah, you don't have to worry about ringing up the doctor and trying to get through to someone, especially at the moment when they're busy. You can just go on your website and find out. Yeah, exactly. Um, and within Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, um, pre prescriptions are fully available. It's just England that have got this bit of a postcode lottery, really. Yeah. Um, so, it's yeah, somebody's just made a good point. We can't help being celiac the same as someone can't help being asthmatic. And it's so true. I think when the when they some the areas removed the access to prescriptions it was just um it was just a, an easy win an easy cost saving um yeah. the, there's lots you can buy in the supermarket so why not go and buy it there but i think you have to appreciate that the products on prescription they're tailor made specifically for celiacs they've got they're fortified with all the right nutrients with yeah. the b vitamins calcium and iron that are, that suit the dietary needs of a celiac um, yeah. And that's why it is on prescription. It, it's your medicine, in effect. You know, they well, wouldn't... That's the only cure, isn't it, for a celiac? Well, not a cure, but the only treatment for celiac disease is a strict gluten-free diet. And I think if you take that access away from people, are you just making it harder for people to be like, oh, well, I can't get any bread, so... Yeah, so, you know, the, the risk is that people are less compliant then. Um, yeah. Is, it's a false well, economy, really. Um, so, sorry, someone just asked what the website is to check the CCG. So if you go on the, to the Javella website, so it's basically just javella.co.uk um, yes. and look on the prescription section, it will tell that you'll see where you can check the postcode there. So have a look at that. Um, obviously, for those areas who can't get prescriptions or indeed, you know, we, we have a lot of followers, as, as I'm sure you do, who are not diagnosed. Um, mm. or uh, following a gluten-free diet for other reasons um, then we have got all of our products available through our um, our subscription box service so um, if you again it's kind of like our online shop so again via our website you can you can have a look at the, the different boxes I know that's how you are getting your products from Juvella now yeah and so, I was really because I remember like when I was first diagnosed and this is like 20 years ago now which makes me feel really old um but <laughs> like, I remember getting all this Javella stuff and I loved it and actually my favorite thing was the pizza bases and I found out recently that you guys are doing them again and I was so glad yeah. and I was like oh my gosh it takes me back it was so exciting yeah. oh I love the pizza bases they're great so yeah <laughs> their pizza bases are available from the shop yeah. as well Someone's just asked, can I get Javella if I can't get a prescription? So yeah, just in case you missed that, we've yeah. got an online shop where you can put together a box um, of various different products from the flour mixes, the breads, the rolls. Um, and then we've got breakfast cereals, oats, um, pasta and crisp bread on the pizza bases, if I've not mentioned those already. Um, yeah. You can kind of mix and match, make up the box that suits you. Um, and it's delivered within a couple of days straight to your door. It's brilliant. I uh, just to kind of because I just remembered I'm just cooking and forgetting to tell people what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know we get excited about pizza. Oh yeah. So I just in the spring onions that I chopped up, and I have popped in about a teaspoons worth of grated ginger, and I'm just just now putting in about a tablespoon of the Javella white mix, yeah. which is going to help make it into a little bit more of a paste because we want it to stick to the bread. We don't want it to be too like liquidy. Um, yeah. So I'm just putting in a bit of that, and then I'm also going to put in an egg white. Now this is going to be the test because I feel like every time I have to separate an egg under pressure, it all goes horribly wrong. Oh gosh, I think I'd have I'd have taken the easy way out and done it before. <laughs> no, no, no easy way out for me. <laughs> so, you can like see this on here, um, but the easiest way I find to do it is to kind of use the 
bits of the show. I mean, some people do it through their hands, and there's probably some gadgets in it, but this is I'm the way sure there is. Awesome. I do it the same way as you do it. Yeah, that's good. So now we'll see if I can do this. And, uh, okay. Okay. So I don't know. You're in shot, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're looking good so far. So yeah. basically, pass it backwards and forwards between the two bits of the shell, trying not to break the yellow. That's where it always goes wrong. Yes. And to make sure we're not wasting any of the yolk, I would always put this aside and then I'll just add it to like scrambled egg or omelette in the morning as well. So you can keep it in the fridge for like a day or so. And like, why waste it? Because it tastes so good. Yeah. I just need to put it in a bowl in a second. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Someone's just really helpfully put the link on from our website for the um, the prescription, the postcode checker. So that's, thank you for that. Ideal. Um, and I guess that link is all on your profile as well, isn't it, on the Javala one, if anyone yes. wants it. Yeah. Right, so I pop in the egg white in here. And then, obviously, you cannot forget the all-important prawns. Oh. Now, I don't know if you guys have cooked with prawns much, but obviously they're grey when they're raw and they're pink when they're cooked. So that's quite a good way when you're cooking stuff like this to know if it's cooked. It's when it's pink. So yes, they, <laughs> they, they did it on purpose. <laughs> so and they you cook want... so quickly, don't they? I think people oh, like... are a bit frightened about cooking prawns in case they <laughs> really not them. It's so easy, and like they taste so good as well. Oh. Like I love them. So I'm just putting about 150 grams in there. I've just got to visually go through. I'm like, what have I put in already? Right. So now. <laughs> in a little bit we're going for like a dash of the sesame oil it's just literally a tiny bit to give it a bit of flavor yeah and again with the soy sauce okay brilliant so i will just pop that in there okay now everybody prepare for a bit of noise because i'm about to blitz this up so yeah. if you a little bit chunkier you can kind of pulse the blender or if you just want like a smooth taste and literally whack it on it do, it's only going to need a few seconds yeah um, either spine so. either way isn't it i suppose yeah. yeah right so just give it a good blitz if you're with me okay. <laughs> okay. give it I, a little always say, I always think oh, i won't talk over when when it's a noisy part but you kind of think there's no point because i'll drown you out <laughs> yeah so i'm just scraping on because some of the spring onions like shot up the edges of the uh, the processor. I'm just going to blitz it again really quickly. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I need to be able to mute myself for that bit, really, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's getting very technical. We don't mind. It's all very normal. So I'll show you what this sort of looks like now. So that is basically like a paste. Yeah, um, it's a, quite a thick yeah. paste, isn't it? Yeah, so that's why you don't want to put too much of the oil in the soy sauce. The first time I made it, I got a bit too slap happy with it, and it was quite runny. I had to add a bit of extra flour. Okay. Um, so that is why when it says a dash, you don't ignore the recipe. And you put yeah, that's a good tip. <laughs> Always follow the recipe, hey? <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's quite a thick paste. And all we're going to do now is we're going to spread this onto the pieces of bread. And then I'm going to cover them with sesame seeds and we're going to fry them and like you might be thinking oh my gosh is that it but that really is it, it is yeah we didn't... it's amazing <laughs> so i'm just going to move the processor out of the way okay so while you're doing that i'll just mention that um, obviously we were talking about the boxes um and yeah. we, we have recently launched a fresh bread box and this was after oh, yeah. lots of customers saying why can't we get your fresh bread in the um in the in the boxes so we've now got a fresh yeah. bread box so you can have um any of the fresh bread so we do the white um and the fiber loaves and the white and fiber rolls and you can mix and match any of those to make up your box of eight loaves or rolls um and that's 21.99 including delivery um it's then going to be baked in our gluten-free bakery in liverpool and delivered to your door within a matter of days so it's brilliant really convenient it's um, great like, I love it, and it's so nice. It's like, it gets really annoying having to go to the supermarket and get sometimes. So just to be able to get a box of bread and you can put a load in the freezer is like, happy days. Yeah, and you just got that safe, guaranteed supply, haven't you? You know it's going to be there. You know, you can go to the supermarket and there might be a loaf there one day. And then the next week, there's, there's nothing. So you know what? I get so angry when I go in for my Juvella bread and they don't have it. I literally throw a tantrum in the aisle. I'm like, where? <laughs> 
Oh, bless you. <laughs> yeah, the boxes are just uh, just so much more convenient, oh. aren't they? <laughs> so what I'm doing with this is I've got the little triangles and I'm literally just spreading like a thick layer of this on top. Um, so kind of like you would, or oh, this is how I would put like Nutella on bread is like a massively thick layer. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, just imagine if that's Nutella, but yes. So I put a nice thick layer, Hopefully you can kind of see that. And I'm just gonna yeah. spread across all the triangles. Um, okay. I've only got a small frying pan, so I'm gonna cook them in batches, but I will need to move my chopping board from the top of the oven to do that. So I'm just gonna quickly put all this on top. And then when we've done that, I'm gonna be sprinkling some sesame seeds on top. Now, obviously if you can't have sesame, you don't have to put the sesame oil or the seeds on it, but I just love sesame seeds. And I think they're such a good kind of part of Chinese cooking as well. Like I always put them in stir fry. So it's just like, it just adds that extra little crunch. Yeah, they're gorgeous. It just tops them off nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. I suppose with you, with you just saying them about having a small frying pan as well, if you made up the amount that you're making up there, but you only wanted to eat a couple of them right now, yeah. that would, they'd would be fine in the fridge for a day or two, wouldn't they? And then you can just, and not I, that you're only going to want to eat one or two, but you can make eight and then cook them yeah. as and when you fancy one or two. Yeah, and I've actually, once I've cooked them, I have frozen them because I did make quite a lot of these to practice because I convinced myself that it's going to be hard and I was like, oh, it's actually really easy. <laughs> But yeah, so you can actually freeze them and then you can just kind of put them in the oven for like five, ten minutes or so to warm up. Um, make sure they're nice and hot, obviously, because of the prawns and then they'll be fine to eat again. So yeah, I guess you could freeze them before you've pan fried them as well, actually, couldn't you? Yeah. So good. I haven't tried, but I don't really see why not. Um, no. And then just fry yeah, so them. I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for making a big batch of things and popping oh, some of yeah. it in the freezer and then it's so much easier the next time you fancy that particular recipe. It really is. My freezer is just full of like collections of things that I'm like, <laughs> go in there and I'm hungry. I'm like, oh, what have I done left over from my cooking? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. I'm just, I'm just on my last one here. So I have got a little bit of mix left over. But again, like if you wanted to make more, like we said, freeze them just to use it up, that'd be absolutely fine. I did put slightly too many prawns in because I I accidentally put a bag of 180 grams, not 150 in there. Yeah, I think I did the same because I've got some mixture left over. But I just thought, well, that's fine. I'll make some more tomorrow. Or you could even freeze the, the topping mixture like that as well. Yeah, yeah, it freezes really well. And keep, like you say, keeps in the fridge. So even if you don't want to make up the toasts and freeze them, you can just whack the mixture in the fridge instead. Absolutely. But, but, so that's done eight triangles in total, or like 16 if you were doing really small ones. Yeah. You might, if you could just see the carnage of this worked up over here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's making these along with us, but if you are, let us know how you're getting on. Um, cause yeah, I'm, the I'm... comments have gone a little bit quiet now. Everyone must, hopefully, they're, um, they're all watching avidly for, for the, the pan frying. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> well do the sesame seeds first anyway, haven't you? I've got my sesame seeds. Again, with stuff like sesame seeds, they're one thing that you want to just double check they don't have any may contain traces of warning on them. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I have found on seeds and nuts, not very often, but occasionally there is the odd, you know, may contain or made yeah. in a factory. Um, most of them are fine. Again, I think this is a Sainsbury's one and it's yeah. got nothing, it's absolutely fine. So just, it's one of those things that I always just double check. I think it's always it's just, just a good habit to be in, isn't it? To just double check even yeah. the things you wouldn't associate with containing gluten. <laughs> the one time you don't check and you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just going to basically very generously sprinkle this on top of the prawn toast. So I'll show you that. Hopefully you can kind of that. So I'm just going to do that with all of them. Um, don't worry if you make a mess because I do. No, I've, I've got sesame seeds all over my kitchen now. <laughs> I've been hoovering up sesame seeds for the last two weeks. <laughs> you know what I did then do? I just poured a load of sesame seeds out onto a small chopping board and um, dunked the prawn toast in them, if that makes sense. Yeah, that would be a much better way to do it than what I've done, which it is. Just made it I only did it halfway through. I was like, there must be a better way of doing this to not get sesame seeds absolutely everywhere. 
Because um, I don't know how you can see, but there's a lot of extra sesame seeds on here. But so these are ready to fry now. So I'm just going to clear off my cooker and um, and we can get frying and then I can eat them. Yay. <laughs> Amazing. I'm literally starving now. <laughs> you about can... having these. Oh, no, I don't mind. <laughs> I think... I think it's actually made it worse that I've made them because I know I can eat them as soon as we're done. <laughs> Whereas... You can smell them as well, can't you? Like, yeah. you're just like, I want to eat those. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, um, I don't know about you, but I think, tradition is it tradition to have them with like a sweet chilli dipping sauce? So I've got a bit of chilli dipping sauce at the ready as well. I've got mine ready. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the second this live goes off, I'm eating all of them. <laughs> I'm just doing a bit of room. Um, and to fry them is really simple. So again, if you're worried about frying stuff, it's not even deep frying, it's just shallow frying. So yeah. all you need is about three to four tablespoons of oil. I'm just using vegetable oil, pretty standard. Um, I just basically put in enough to just cover the bottom of the pan. So oh, that's good. That's, yeah, so it's not kind of, they're not deep fried, so they're not going to be really greasy then, are they? No, so obviously they are going to absorb some of the oil, but I mean, that's why we're making this a treat. We're not making it to be healthy, not boring. You can do that all the rest of the time. Have yeah, it exactly. with Brian, that's the healthy vegetable part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nearly the weekend, so we can, um, these can be a, a Thursday or Friday night treat. Exactly, and I'm all about balance as well. It's like, you know, have treats like this. Just don't eat them every single night. I mean, of unless course. you do, but... Like, just have it with, like, veg and stuff and nice stuff, right? Lovely. Everything in moderation. Yeah. So once I'm just, while I'm heating this up, I did actually have a couple of people send in some questions, which I thought we could maybe answer. Okay, brilliant. Um, so the first one, I just jotted them down, like, literally two minutes before I came on. I was like, oh, questions. Um, yeah. oh, and just to let you know, I'm just putting this on, like, a medium sort of heat, medium high okay. and just off a bit first because if you put it in when it's cold it will take ages to kind of heat up so we get the oil hot then put them in and then they go nice and crispy perfect so yeah so one of the questions i got asked actually was what is the benefit of getting a diagnosis of celiac disease and i think actually that's quite relevant really because one of the benefits is that if you're in an area you can get prescriptions you can get food like this on prescription so that's yeah. definitely a bonus definitely and i think you know not only that you as, as we mentioned earlier you're getting products that are tailor-made for your specific dietary needs yeah. rather than being free from other ingredients that you might yeah. not need to avoid like a lot of the supermarket products yeah. um, and it also gives you access to that health care and the follow-up with dietitians and you should mm -hmm. have an annual um, blood test and checkups yeah. just to make sure that your gluten-free diet you know you that you're sticking to that diet and there's um and you know that you you perfectly you know you, you uh, um your intestine it's repaired itself and and you're uh, you you're all healthy and and well again because a lot of people feel so poorly don't they prior to diagnosis mm, yeah um, and it's really important like, obviously i know it's sort of it's difficult for people because you do have to eat gluten for six weeks to get a diagnosis and if you've already cut it out you're like well i know it makes me ill so why am i so having to eat it again and I know it's horrible but like Anna said you get all the support with it so just for knowing I think for me it's like knowing that you have that and being able to be like right I actually do have this and this is all the help I can get because of yeah. it rather yeah, than then if, not knowing of course and then if you then are in an area where you can get prescriptions mm -hmm. then you've you've obviously got those products um and it yeah. actually works out a more cost effective way of, of yeah. managing your diet because you can get all those basic staples on prescription exactly. um, and obviously they, it's quite expensive to buy things in the supermarkets in the free from aisle um but on prescription if you are getting more than three items a month then what mm. most celiacs do is get a prepayment certificate yeah. which is about 108 pounds a year so you don't pay the nine pounds per prescription most people yeah. get that annual the annual prepayment certificate or you can you can do it quarterly if that's a bit more manageable but that then covers all your gluten-free food plus any medication you may, might have throughout the, that 12 months um, and it just makes it a much more oh gosh, much cheaper definitely. way of, of managing it yeah definitely so my oil is ready now so i'm just gonna let you okay. guys know what i'm basically gonna do i'll probably do these like four at a time um yeah. and 
want to make sure the prawn side is going in first. So we're going to okay. and obviously it's quite thick. So apart from a few rogue sesame seeds, it won't like slop off into the pan. Um, okay. So I'm going to pop them in. And hopefully you can hear that sizzle. I don't oh, know how yeah. good so I'm going to put like four in and we're going to give them about two minutes on this side. Obviously keep an eye on it. If you think they're starting to go like kind of black or brown a bit too quickly, then you can turn the heat down. Um, maybe to yeah. Pull them down because I think sometimes it's difficult with oil to gauge like whether some, I mean, I always put it in when it's too hot and I burn it. And this time I've, I've been cautious and I've gone yeah. lower. Yeah, I, I, threw a few, I threw a few sesame seeds in first and watched how they browned. <laughs> and like, I'll just show you, you can probably, possibly see, yeah. probably well, um, they're starting to kind of sizzle around the edges. So I'll just let it up, otherwise I'll get distracted chatting and I'll be like, oh gosh, I've found them. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep an eye. Yeah, I did keep checking mine just to kind of make sure yeah. I didn't want to burn them. Um, so, uh, like tongs basically we'll do two minutes ish and then yeah. we'll flip them over and then we'll see what they look like and of course if you flip them over and you're not sure they're cooked enough do two minutes but then just flip them back again yeah um, definitely and some really... people might like them you know a, a more golden brown than others so it's you know it's, it's personal preference exactly and then i'm just getting ready for when i get them out i'm going to pop them on some kitchen towel on a plate while i fry the other ones and it okay. just soaks up any of the excess grease so it's nice to just have that to the side ready um okay. lovely just I'm just gonna have a sneaky peek yeah do that someone's just said they've been diagnosed 15 plus years there's so much more available now including from juvella which is fab um so that's really nice to hear and yeah you you're right things have come on leaps and bounds in the past 15 oh, years my. I mean, even just the thought of being able to order a box of bread to my door like 20 years ago, it just wouldn't have happened. Like, no. I can actually go on your website and pick, it's like a virtual supermarket. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so no, it is great, isn't it? No, so we're it is, delighted to be able to offer that. It's so different. I mean, I think when I was diagnosed, there wasn't even a free for a while, so. No, I guess there wouldn't have been. And I think even when the free from aisle started, it was a bit of a free from, a bit of organic and a bit of vegetarian in the same aisle. So that was the same sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so these have had two minutes. I'm just going to show you, hopefully. So, as you can see. Oh, lovely. Nice and gorgeous. So I'm going to flip these again. Okay. And we're just gonna do the other side. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna go lovely and crispy. Kind of like, I guess it's like a Chinese version of like eggy bread that you'd have with a fry up. Except yeah, I guess so. Cool. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna give them another two minutes on that side. And then I think, to be honest, they'll probably be done, but I'll double check them and see if I'm happy with them. I might give them another little flip yeah. um, and pop them to one side. So I don't know if anyone else is making them. Hopefully you're, or, you know, you're watching this back and you're at the stage and you're very excited and they smell amazing. So, oh, yeah, they are. They're so amazing. You've <laughs> got to try them. You have to try them. It's going to definitely be something I'll make frequently now. I've got a, a little boy coming back from football in the within the next hour. He will be starving and he'll probably, if I've not eaten all these, he'll devour them. <laughs> I was going to say, make sure you eat some before he comes home, by the way. <laughs> Okay, they're starting to go nice and golden on the bottom as well, which is good now. Um, so yeah, I'm looking, oh, I'm happy with these. They look good. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> it is just really nice though to find stuff that's so like, the things that you never thought you could eat. Like I've never ever had prawn toast before because I didn't really, you know, 20 years ago, I didn't really like Chinese food anyway. I was 12. Yeah, of course. So, whereas now I'm like, all this food I look at and I'm like, I wish I could try. And it's so yeah. easy of it gluten-free and I think people just don't realize like how easy no, it's also so nice to show a recipe that is really easy to make because I think if if mm. even prior to diagnosis if you were familiar with lots of um, nice foods that you enjoyed and you're not a particularly you know you want a cook or a baker yeah. then you don't want to necessarily have to think oh I'm gonna have to start making everything from scratch so yeah. um, to see a recipe that's so easy to do it's like well anyone can do that you don't have to be experienced in the kitchen do you Exactly, and I think to me that's part of the ways to make having senior be so fun. Like 
and that, that probably sounds ridiculous to some people who think it just sounds awful but like to me it's about making it like a bit of a foodie adventure and enjoying food and trying new things and that's like part of the fun of it to be honest it's like it is. yeah yeah i wasn't diagnosed with celiac and so I'm just yeah, gonna get... I think because, because you then need to make more things from scratch, you're obviously eating a lot less processed food. So your diet yeah. is just generally healthier anyway, isn't it? It's healthier and you learn more about what goes into food and you care more about what you're eating. And like, you just learn loads of skills as well from cooking yeah. stuff. Like, there's so many benefits to it. And I know it can be really hard to see that when you're first diagnosed and you think, oh my gosh, all this amazing food has been taken away from me. Of course, yeah. It really is like, I mean, look at those. Oh my word, they look amazing. <laughs> they are nice and gold on the bottom. Gorgeous. Closer for you. I can't even pick it up now. So <laughs> on the bottom. Oh, perfect. Oh, Sarah, they look lovely. By a DZ. So I just <laughs> their kitchen roll and I'm just going to pop in the second lot now. So they can just go straight into the pan where the others were. You don't have to. Like, oh, the comment look, looks delicious, somebody said. I agree. Yeah. You have to make them. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've obviously just shown everyone just how easy they are to make. They really I, are. Now you're going to have to all believe that we're not lying when we say they're really easy. Nope. <laughs> and so all I've done as well is I've just popped them straight in the oil, but obviously if you find that you've run out of oil or it's soaked a lot up, if you haven't used a lot, just put a little bit extra in, it'll be fine. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, that really is how easy they are. I, I'm like, I don't know what else to tell you guys. You just I know, to... that's it. It's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, rest... someone just said with sweet chilli sauce, you're made. Oh. That's exactly what we'd said, so. I've got my sweet chilli sauce ready. <laughs> I think I should just demo this bit, actually, of what happens next, so. I, you know, I was going to say, you make, you're going to make everyone really jealous now, and you're actually going to have a bite. Another someone oh, else they're... saying they look delicious. Are they good? <laughs> Hot, but they're good. <laughs> oh no, they do look amazing. I don't know how well you can see, but actually, you can see when you bite into it that the prawn is pink. So oh, it's got like yeah. the quite quite thick layer. That's how you can be sure that they're definitely cooked as yeah. well. So if yeah. you are nervous, and you just cut one in half and check. But honestly, yeah. you like two minutes and they're done. Yeah, such a high temperature. Like you don't have to worry about the horns not being done. So I'm sure that's this back. But Anna, so this live is obviously going to be posted up on the Javella feed, but the recipe is actually yeah. on the It is, yeah. So have a look on the website for that. And we're going to, as you say, we're going to post this on the feed anyway, so you can re-watch it just to, to check that you're following Sarah's recipe. So, But yeah, you've got bad. recipes on there actually, which is, again, if anyone's kind of stuck, Obviously, I've got loads of recipes on my blog, and Javella has loads yeah. of recipes on their website. So there's so many resources out there. Like, generally, if there's something you're missing, you can find a great free version of it. Absolutely, yeah. No, I find your, your website really handy for, for finding out lots of information about things that are available that maybe I wouldn't have thought of, because I don't go into the supermarket as you do as a, as a celiac. So yeah. it's really interesting to see your point of view as well. Um, Oh, someone said, this was so good, thank you. Please do more recipes again another time. So that's actually a perfect prompt because um, we're, we're going to do another live next month, aren't we? Yes, um, we are. So we're planning to do Scotch eggs, yeah. which, again, is something that I always thought was really difficult, but it's so easy and really fun to make. Um, yeah. So and actually, we're going to have a go at that, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, if you've got kids, it's the best recipe to make with kids as well. So, like, if you want to Definitely. come along... And Actually, yeah, we're looking at doing it towards the end of July and the children are about to break up for summer holidays. It's obviously going to start raining at that moment. So uh, okay. that's when you can have a go at uh, get them in the kitchen and get involved. So remember yeah. what you'll need for that. You'll need some of the, the bread for that because we're going to make breadcrumbs um, yeah. to coat the... <laughs> to coat the scotch eggs so you've got your leftover breadcrumbs there yeah so basically from now until the end of july you need to make a batch of prawn toast a week keep the crumbs the <laughs> and the crumbs, and then we'll use those to make scotch eggs <laughs> yeah or if you've not already got the bread on your prescription then pop it on your prescription and if you can't get a prescription yeah. then have a look and, and get one of the boxes of bread um 
so worth doing because it is really good value for going and food brand as well. Like, and the fact that it saves you a trip to the supermarket, I mean, winning. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we've all gone a bit um, into our online shopping, haven't we? Certainly in the last year. So, Anna. Woo. Oh, look at those. Oh, they are all actually watering. They look gorgeous, Sarah. I think you should show yours again, though, because yours are much more beautifully presented. I've, like, slapped my face. <laughs> I'm about but to... I had the time. I did it earlier, and I had the time to kind of... Um... Yeah, but look at that. Look at that, <laughs> ladies. And that well, everything beautiful. looks better. I'm doing it the wrong way around, aren't I? Because I'm it's like... back to front. But, uh... <laughs> Get the idea. They're going to fall off in a minute. <laughs> you need to just go eat those now, I think. Before... Before Definitely. Wait. <laughs> oh well lots of people saying they're going to try the scotch eggs as well but um before I mean, you do that we, we need to see your pictures of the prawn toast don't yeah. we we want to see them and yeah we'll post yeah. it up as soon as we have it about the scotch eggs so you guys can come join in i'll be expecting to see you all there ready yeah definitely oh thank you sarah that was fantastic once again yeah it's been really fun thank you and um, i'm looking forward to talking into these um, there you are <laughs> really am <laughs> Oh, oh, well, we'll sign off. But just to say, kind of, you know, obviously Sarah's got her, her um, website and yep. uh, the Javella website. And if you've ever got any queries about recipes, products, prescriptions, yep. you know, you know where we are. Um, contact us via email. At, we've got a free phone advice line. Um, have a look on the website for all the, the, all the other information you might need. Um, but yeah, we're, we're always happy to help. Yeah, brilliant. Do it and go buy some bread and make these. Yeah, definitely oh. <laughs> oh thank you sarah and enjoy i will you too thanks anna bye everyone bye everyone bye